One second, this is the tunes. Welcome in, everybody. Episode 55 of RHR. Special guest this evening, my buddy George Janko. Might be the last time you see me with specs. Get PRK surgery tomorrow, and I'm scared shitless. You're missing some good tunes, but it's okay. Oh, I'm done now, I'm done now. Okay, good. Beautiful Wednesday to be alive. Dude, thank you, George, for coming on the pod, brother. Uh, thank you for having me. Wait, what surgery are you going through? PRK surgery on my eyes. What, you it, heard of it? No, I it's haven't. like LASIK, but I think it's better for combat people. So if it gets smacked, LASIK, the flap can get fucked up. Oh, oh yeah, we're not cussing. Are we not cussing this pod? Oh, uh, we could. Oh, we can. Yeah, I mean, this is your podcast. Man. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm no, I just scared, didn't dude. know that that could happen. I know. Well, this is PRK. Supposedly, it's more better if I get hit or something. It won't flop out. But still, I mean, going under the going under the laser, 15 minutes, and it's all done, and I see better than ever. You have good eyes? I have great eyes. Damn. I have great eyes. Yeah, yeah. I grew up with great eyes, man. Great eyes and great teeth? Did you grow up with both? Yes. And it's so funny because, dude, I had really bad teeth growing up, and people used to make fun of me about it. Uh -huh. And then just like my teeth just formed together. Did you do, did you do like the wire braces? I didn't do anything. What? Let Nothing. me see. Give me a good one. What the? F Nothing. Not a thing. The Lord my, my really baby teeth you. fell out, and my uh, my and it's so funny, dude. And, and I, I'm not even kidding. I got made fun of so much. I was super insecure about it, mm -hmm. and it was like my I think my first insecurity prayer that I ever made. I used to like God, please, like I, I'm tired of my teeth. I don't want this. <laughs> and uh, I, I'll never forget the dentist walked in because we, we do it every six months to mm -hmm. come in. And my mom was like, I don't want him to have braces at such a young age because they wanted to push it around like second grade, third grade. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't know, like maybe it's too young for him. And the next year uh, we came back to do X-rays and. The doctor's like, dude, check this out. They're forming together. And so they just literally formed, like, great together. That's Damn. why I don't wear any of that metal thing. I never had any uh, braces or anything like that. Lucky, dude. So, yeah. My fucking wisdom teeth were coming in at a point, and uh, I'm like a tribal member, Native American. Yeah. So you get free dental. So I went to the reservation. I, I scheduled an appointment, and uh, um, a bunch of purebred Indians picked me up in a van, and they're taking me to the reservation to get my, my molars or my wisdom teeth out. Oh, this is deep. I didn't know about this. <laughs> this is, uh, well, I was actually in college. But then they bring me to the, the reservation, and they're, they're like, well, okay. Okay, we'll take care of you, bud. And I'm like, I'm having severe pain. So they pull the teeth in front of my wisdom teeth out to take the pressure off my jaw. I'm like, so I'm just gaps back here from the reservation dentist taking care of me. <laughs> Why didn't they just pull out the... I don't know. Maybe there were... Too big, maybe it was gonna be too extensive. They're wanting to get out of there, so they just pulled the wrong teeth. No shot. <laughs> Fucking sweet, right? No, that's not sweet at all. I'd be so <laughs> mad, bro. When you I eat know. stuff, did things get caught in a little gap? You know? Oh yeah. Oh, that's I would fucking lose it bro that like little things in my teeth piss me off so i always have to carry yeah. floss on me so for someone to pull out the wrong i would fight somebody and, and dude come to think of it you're a fighter i don't know why yeah. you didn't fight every single person in that office being in college being broke i'm like well at least they took my pain away whatever and just fucking took off that's hilarious dude so how's it been uh working for impulsive has it been just all over the place or it, it's it's just a dream, bro. Like there's literally times where I wake up and I'm just like, how did I get here? And, and, and I'm not trying to be cheesy when I'm saying this, but like I've worked very, 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 very hard to be where I'm at. Mm -hmm. And I always thank Logan and Logan always makes his joke. He goes, bro, he goes, I just gave you a platform. You shined. I didn't do anything. And, uh, but it's still hard to like, not always thank him like consistently yeah. over and over again, because I have no problem telling people where I came from. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I have no, I don't care about like, yeah. oh, I'm here, he's here, whatever. All, none of that. To me, I wake up every day, be like, damn, my my best friend's so lit. He just one day made me lit. Like I, yeah. I find that so fascinating. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. I, I forgot what book I was reading, but they talk about different kinds of luck. There's luck that you set yourself up for, and there's actually just crazy luck that just random happens. But it's interesting because similar to sugar too. Like yeah. 
I'm super thankful for him. He's grown up into this big superstar and he's kind of gave me a platform and a lot of eyes and viewers and stuff too. So it's a similar thing. But uh, so like, does someone just text you? Does Logan, does Mike just text you and say, hey, be here at this time and it's... No, it's a full running like business. Like they have, we have a bunch of people kind of organizing and doing everything. Uh, there's a group chat that kind of coordinates all the stuff for travels and stuff. So it's it's a legitimate production. So I actually find that also to be very like blessings too, because mm -hmm. you work with people in the influencer world. They're very like kind of sloppy with it. There's no schedules. There's nobody really running it. Mm -hmm. But our group, there's a bunch of people running it. There's like a chain of commands that are like trying to get things going. So do you get like how many days say the next podcast? Do you just find out a couple days before and then they book your flights and you just go to the airport and yeah go. so it, it varies so if we have like a special guest that's like arnold you know like somebody huge where mm -hmm. they're like yo we can get him in in three days you gotta make plans for it we'll adjust that everybody will kind of coordinate but usually we do have like a good calendar that's like hey in two weeks we're gonna be doing this 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 and that mm -hmm. like i already knew the next four or five we're doing and they just kind of like it's kind of cool, dude, because, like, again, it's not corporate. So, like, if, if we're all doing something, like, hey, I'm doing this this day. Can we push it back? And mm -hmm. they're very flexible. So, it's it's it, all around, dude. This whole thing is just a big blessing. It's fucking yeah. awesome, dude. Yeah, I mean, I get to sit there, chop it up with cool-ass people, uh, get to meet really cool people. And it's just like a funnel, dude. Like, I... I got to do stand up because of it. I, I met some really cool people that I look up to and became friends with, uh, uh financially it's put me on a different level on uh, uh being known it's put me on a different level um i, I felt like i was social media recognizable for sure mm -hmm. before impulsive because of all the things that i've done before but like now it's just very different oh, it, it's bet. very different I um bet. we <clears throat> while i was on my trip here i uh after a few viral moments on impulsive because mm -hmm. like one viral moment on my thing would last like a few days but like on impulsive it has such a longevity and people repost and there's other channels talking about it so i went to uh in and out the one that i used to go to by um that by the pv mall by uh mm -hmm. you know what i'm yep, at? yeah yep. i used to live over there too so horizon high school is the high school that i graduated from and i pull up and i'm just gonna be honest with you i was I, I stopped smoking for a long time. And while I'm in Arizona, kind of like vacating, I was like, oh, I'm just going to smoke with my friends here. Mm -hmm. You know, just try to keep the balance going. And uh, I we, we smoked, and my buddy's like, yo, I'll take you guys to, uh, to in and out And I'm like, bet, in and out let's go. We get there, and it's like 500 kids from the high school that I went to. And immediately my heart dropped because, like, I, I don't know, it sounds like I'm being a pussy, but, like, when you grow up and you kind of, like, had, a, like, maybe, like, a tough time in high school and stuff, like, yeah. you see a group of kids that look like high school, you will still feel that, like, oh, I'm going to get, like, shit thrown at me or, like, whatever. Like, so, I, I, like, my heart kind of dropped, and then I'm like, dog, I'm, a, I'm an adult now. Yeah. That was where my brain first went. Uh -huh. Like, I don't care what they say. Like, I'm an adult now. Yeah. <laughs> but then they all turned around and started freaking out that I was there, and I'm like, whoa. I didn't even think about it that way. And so like, there's a line of people taking pictures with me and I'm like, dude, this is fucking nuts. Damn. This is the school that I went to and all of them are gassed to see me. But when I went to that school, it was like- Fucking getting picked on It was shit. not the love that I have now. <laughs> so it was, just crazy. Like, it was a really cool. And I told them, I was like, yo, I went to your school. They're like, you went to Horizon? And I said, yeah. But like, you know, it's so funny. Um, you There's no evidence of me going to Horizon. Oh. So when I went to Pinnacle, I got picked on so much that they had to move me to Horizon. And you get your GED from Horizon? No, I went to, oh, I graduated from Horizon, but they removed me from, they, I don't know who thought it would be funny to oh. remove me from the yearbook. <laughs> so I'm not in the yearbook, bro. They Damn. thought it was a funny prank. I go, bro, you just ruined my memories of life. Like I don't have, any, like you go, you know how like there's pictures of you like next to your classmates? Mm -hmm. They removed me. Like I, I have no pictures. There's no like nothing. That's like you funny. open that cover to cover. There's nothing about me at all. Damn. And uh, the pinnacle one that I had the yearbook, I wish I brought it. Dude, the shit that they were saying in there like was like, hey George, uh, can't say I ever liked you. <laughs> uh, but Hope you know you what? You don't look like a monkey as much as I thought you did. Like, I'm like, what the fuck is this? I'm reading through this. I'm like, wow, my, my childhood really was tough in high school. Like, Damn, that's funny. Yeah, but so with impulsive and stuff, you, you just can figure out the percentages because with Sugar and I, I mean, it's a, it's tricky with friends and business. I always feel like it's kind of tricky. I actually ordered this book called Friends and Business that I'm reading right now because Sean and I are thinking about opening a coffee shop together. Oh, that's dope. Literally right next door. We're both into, in super into coffee, and we're thinking about doing one. But it's always tricky. Is your guys' communication in that area pretty good? 
Yeah, very, very. We're very uh, blunt with each other. Like, yeah. Very blunt with each mm -hmm. other. Uh, we kind of learned that. So it's kind of, it, this is how the dynamic goes. Logan is on this just crazy vertical right now. Yeah. We're like, just, I think he, of him as like an A-star. Like that dude is just killing 100%. it in all genres of things. It's insane. Um, and his momentum is moving at such a velocity that sometimes when like he's talking to us, he can be short tempered in the moment because the dude's dealing with a list of things that will take a hundred people to do and he's mm -hmm. doing it on his own so like yeah sometimes if we could tell that he's not in the mood we'll just kind of like oh we'll wait and then that's the worst they'll get but as a business partner logan is the most generous and most uh like for example like if i'm like hey dude you're being dumb in this situation like he's not the type of dude that's like nah fuck you you don't know what you're talking about like he'll genuinely be like do you mean that and i'm like yeah and then he'll sit there and he'll like really reflect on it He's not the type of dude to just brush some, something off and just, but he was, he grew. And like, so it's cool to see that Mike, believe it or not, this dude is like the showman. Like he gets everything in order when it comes to like cars, getting us to the plays. Like yeah. he's very, oh, bro, like this, I, I call him Houdini because we'll be <laughs> in an event and I'm like, yo, there's no way we're going to be able to get in and out at a certain time. It's going to be so many people, the traffic, he'll have cars lined up, blocking the street, taking us from here to there. I look at him like, bro, this is insane how you could coordinate shit. He is like too, at right? a, at a level that I've never seen in my life. And on top of that, he'll coordinate our business while he's coordinating women he wants to hang out with <laughs> at the same time. And it's just, it's incredible to watch. I have um, respect for both of the people that I work with. You mm -hmm. know, I might not see eye to eye all the time. Yeah. So I think that's what makes it easy. I don't have to see eye to eye with them, but I have to respect them. They're very hardworking and they're very passionate. So yeah. that, that helps with the whole friends thing. And also, bro, like... I have no pot to pee in. Do you get what I'm saying? I, I like my dad used to always tell me like be grateful, but also know where, know your place. Mm -hmm. So like Logan's giving me a platform that was already successful. Me being on it and doing well, and the audience like loving me on it is a blessing in its own. I'm not here to poke the bear and say, hey, this is what I want, blah blah blah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I'm still very grateful and very honored to. Bro, think about this. I could have done the podcast and done as well as I'm doing and have all these cool moments on it. And he could have been like, yo, I'm just gonna pay you the salary. But mm -hmm. the dude made me an owner of the company. Like that's yeah. that's crazy. Even for me, that's crazy. I'm like, damn, like I, I didn't deserve it, but he thought I I did in his eyes. So like it yeah. was, it was it's really cool. It was really cool to uh, to have people that you love and respect have a, have a cool business that brings you in, so. Yeah, and it, it seems like when you just get super, super famous, your actual real friends, they just become more, more special. Yeah. Because everyone wants to be your friend. You're the coolest guy on the block, blah, blah, blah. But your, your, your day ones, like how long have you been friends with Logan? And uh, so Logan, I, I, I met him at a gym, but when I met him, he was a, he was a Viner and I didn't even know Vine was a thing. Mm -hmm. So I thought I just knew him from Facebook clips. I don't know if you remember this, but way back in the day when we just had Facebook and that was the only social media, they would mm -hmm. post Revines. And I thought Revine was a Facebook page. I didn't even know it was an app. Um, and uh, he's the one that told me to get into the social media thing. So like I've been there since the jump for social media for my career because he put me on it. Uh, but he wasn't anywhere near the stature he was. Like I'm bigger than he was then that by a one, long yeah. shot, and that should say a lot. So was Vine similar? Were you getting paid through Vine views? I don't know, bro. I was on Vine for like a few months, and they all just like you started crashed. popping off a little bit, didn't you? On Vine, I had like five six hundred k. And the way I did it was kind of clever because, like, I was dude. I didn't know anything about social media. Like, I, and I don't mean that in like a, like a joking way. I had no idea anything. I didn't have an Instagram. I didn't have a just uh, Facebook a on the computer. I had Facebook because of like friends I talked to on. Um, uh, I'm gonna pick this up, right? Is this a? Oh my bad. Uh, I had I had Facebook because of like, um, high school. Yeah, that's it. I like, was in I, college at that point, so Facebook was the shit. Exactly. So you just repost, send shit to your friends. Like that. That was it. Um, then I got. I saw this internet stuff, and I was like, "Oh, this is crazy." Because remember, I, I came to LA to do music because I was I was doing music at the time. I listened to one of your songs this morning. The one that the most listens. This was good. Which one? It was popping. I, I sent it to JX, but the one with the most listens on uh, uh, Spotify. I'm trying to. Uh, oh, feel so alive. 
That was good. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. liked it. I wrote that when I was fourteen. No way. Yeah, yeah. That's fucking impressive. Thank you. I, I, I so I started with uh, when I was a kid. I used to dance like professionally. Like they used to pull me out of school so much, I got held back in the third grade. Mm-hmm. And then uh, my mom was like, "Oh, you're gonna be the best backup dancer." And I go, "What the fuck did you say?" I was like, "I'm not being a backup dancer. <laughs> I'm gonna be the star." And my mom was like, "What do you mean? You don't do anything. You just dance. Like you're gonna be a dancer, but that's still cool." Uh-huh. And I was like, "Nah, nah. I want to be front and center like Michael Jackson." And uh, my dad goes, well, you need to write like music or poems or something like to get into it. So I started writing poems and uh, I told my dad, I go, yo, I, I wrote this poem. I think it's really good. He goes, you should like enter it in competition. See how good you are. I entered in the competition I won. And so my dad was like, oh shit. Like, okay. You're like really good at this. Just read the poem. No, I wrote it. No, but in the competition, you just read it. Yeah. Okay. Well, I actually didn't even read it. I just submitted it. Mm-hmm. So, like, it was just a, uh, like a elementary school thing, mm-hmm. um, but it, it, it won. And then um, I, I from there, I started, I asked my dad, I go, yo, could you take me to Guitar Center and, like, get some, like, recording studio stuff? Um, and I would just record songs, like, all the time. And then one thing led to another, I recorded a music video. Uh, at Like, and I invited all of my friends. And, it, and if you look at the music video, like, it was shot way back in the day when I was mm-hmm. young, and it still holds up. Yeah. It was like a it was a legit music video. We shot it, we put money into it, we did all that stuff, and then Justin Bieber came out with the My World tour, and I was like, "Yo, I'm gonna enter the singing competition." I think like five thousand people entered from LA and um, mm-hmm. in Arizona, and I won that. Damn! So I got to perform at his concert, but like outside the arena before it opens up, like with Kiss FM, uh-huh. and uh, that's when my high school got met. Cause they thought I rigged it. Cause there's a picture of me hugging the judges afterwards. But obviously, you win, you're gonna hug the judges. You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? Like, so there was a picture that flew around in high school, and that was the reason why I had to leave my high school. That's crazy. Because there were so many people. Cause I went to a school where there was a lot of singers, and they like wanted to perform. Mm-hmm. And they got they made up this rumor that my dad paid the judges or something. And then I got on the dirty.com. Do you know what the dirty.com is? I think I've heard of that. It's like this website, like. Back in the day before there was like social media and stuff like that. It was just a website. You would just go and just bash people. And uh, I was up there. It was Fuck. me hugging the judges. It was like, this Persian boy. I'm like, I'm not even Persian, <laughs> dude. Like, that's funny. Uh, so yeah, that that that's how I started the music thing. I went to uh, Conservatory of Recording Arts out here in Arizona. Mm-hmm. And then uh, when I was interning for a recording studio in um, LA, Justin Bieber walks in. And I went up to go say hi to see if like maybe he remembers that I performed. Long shot, because it's Justin Bieber, he has like a bunch of shows. Yeah. I went up to him and then the studio engineer goes, hey man, what the fuck are you doing? You can't go and talk to Justin Bieber. He goes, you're the intern. And I go, well, yeah, I know, but like, I'm just gonna, I, I performed that. He goes, I don't, no, shut up. He's like, you just, mm-hmm. listen, you talk to him if he's like, hey, I need a drink or somebody to eat my ass. Yeah. And I literally just, I'll never forget that because the first thing when I was like, oh, get a drink, it makes sense. But then the eat the ass, it was so degrading. <laughs> I was just like, I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh. So I stepped outside and I called my dad and I go, yo, yo fuck this guy. I go, I don't want to be here anymore. My dad's like, then fuck him, leave him. And I was like, all right. So I just literally walked out of the internship. Uh, and uh, a year later, Literally a year later, Johnny, who like hangs out with Justin Bieber and all that, mm-hmm. he, he was with the Nelk boys. John Nelk, Shahidi? I always say their name. What? Yes, John Shahidi. Yeah. He invited me to Justin Bieber's birthday party. So like one year later from like, I wasn't even allowed to talk to him. I was shaking his hand at his birthday party and I was like, wow, this is a really cool turn of events. <laughs> uh, but still, I've never told him. I've bumped into this so many times and it's such a weird thing to like see Justin Bieber and want to tell him. Like, hey, I got to perform at your thing, but I always see that intern guy in my head. So like, I it literally psychs me out every time. Cause I'm that's like, funny. maybe it was meant to be, maybe I'm not supposed to tell this guy. Yeah, this. Um, that's funny. But yeah, then Logan told me I sucked at music and told me to just switch, to, switch directions. Switch. You need friends like that, man. He, 100%. He literally sat me down and goes, listen, bro. He's like, you're good at music. He goes, but you'll always just be good at it. He's like, you'll never be like a musician. Mm-hmm. And I was like, bet. And I was like, you know what? I somewhat kind of feel that as well. So I like, I just went into, um, the social media realm. Well, I just was talking to somebody about this dude because uh, somebody came up to me and they're like, "Yo, how do you? How did you get to where you were?" Not by the way, not that I'm like at a at a level of like, "Whoa!" But some dude that met me, he was like, "Yo, how did you get to where you were?" Yeah, he's like, "I'm really terrified to make a step." And I said, "Bro, like, I work hard and pray hard, but the one thing that I've learned is nobody knows exactly how they're gonna get there. Like, if you would have asked me 10 years ago, you're gonna be on a podcast, I'd be like, what is a pod? I don't even know what a yeah. podcast is. So 
but that podcast opened up a door for my stand up, for the new movie coming out, for yeah. all of these cool things that I got going on. So I, I told him, I go, to, to be realistic, bro, you'll never know how to get there, but you just got to keep pushing through. You got to you gotta work for something. I started with music because I wanted to be an entertainer. Then I got into doing skits. Then I went into the TV shows, to the movies, and now it's the podcast. Mm -hmm. But like, I didn't think this is how I was going to get to where I was. Yeah, it, I mean, the world's changing so much with fucking YouTube, dude. It's just, it's crazy. If you had to go back right now and start over, mm. what kind of shit would you do on YouTube? And how, like... Mm. What would you do? What would you be like? Okay, I'm gonna start. Well, this. I would cheat because if I had to go back and I had the knowledge I had now, I would just hit all of the verticals that I knew were gonna explode. Uh -huh. Like I would do vlogging before vlogging was a thing. Yeah, I would do the say, re reaction. I'll do the live thing. In this day and age, right now, you're like, okay, uh oh, I'm about if, to start a YouTube. Oh, if I had right to start now, now yep. that's tough. It is. It's isn't tough. It? It's tough. I I was just talking to Reed and uh, Tanner about it, bro. Like I, I I sound like a cheese ball when I say this, but like every single thing that's happened in my life is such an overwhelming like this had to be God. Mm -hmm. Even Logan, bro. Like he's not very much like a a follower of Christ as I am. He believes in a higher power, but like we get into it and he'll look at me and he'll be like, dude, like your life is weird. Like I met Logan, he opened up the door to like social media. Mm -hmm. Then he, that opened up Joe Coy for stand up. Then that opened up the producers and directors for my last movie that is doing my movie now. Mm -hmm. Like all of it had to do with other people coming and giving me more than I even deserve. Yeah. I, I, I am so beyond grateful to be in the position that I am because I'm not more talented than these people watching and I am not even, I, I'm hardworking for sure, but bro, we both know that there's so many people in this dojo that will train and train and train. Yeah. Being a hard worker at the end of the day is not all you need. You have to have like so many pieces of the puzzle so when people do ask me like what would you do if you went back in time or like if you start bro i don't know how i got here now yeah. so like it's very hard for me to answer that question and you could say it's, it's god or, or someone kind of helping you out but it also could just be you for sure i do believe that bro i, I and I, I, like so my whole view of life is always going to be gospel because that's the first thing in my life mm -hmm. but i tell people all the time bro if you open up the gospel in any direction nowhere in the bible was just some dude just sitting on the couch and then god came and blessed them yep i think that god gave us like hey this is how you will kill it in life mm -hmm. and it has to do with hard work harvesting like going after your crops watering them so he just gave us the playbook like this is the way that i can say it if you work for something as hard as you physically can, I grew up on the bullshit of this, right? If you really believe it's possible. And nowadays, all I hear is like anxiety, depression. You can't do this. Stay inside. Do this. Do that. And I'm like, whoa, whatever happened to that whole? And I know this sounds cheesy again. But whatever happened to this Disney Channel life where it's like, you dream it, believe it. Like, go out there, chase your dreams. Like, that's the shit that I grew up on. Mm -hmm. So when I'm watching these kids like going through this whole Back in the day, there was this much emo kids in my school. Now I feel like the whole school is just emotional as fuck. It's it's really reached a new level. It's a whole different level, bro. It's a it's just a bunch of whiny pussies just complaining all the time and just going soup. And TikTok, I, and zoop, I cannot TikTok, wait zoop. to see where the depression lies in the future because people are like, oh, we're at a high now. But bro, we're breeding this. We're like installing it into these children. Like, yeah. yo, like you, you're gonna need this to get better. Dude, I was talking to Tony Robbins and he said like, if you have like 10 people that are depressed and eight people just go to the gym, I mean, sorry, uh, if they go to the gym, all 10 people, eight of those 10 people will no longer have depression. Yeah. A lot of people are depressed because they're not active. They're not working out, yeah. they're not eating healthy. And that was me, like during COVID, I was working so much, but I wasn't working out or eating. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I was the toughest year mentally. I was like, what the fuck is happening? Yeah. And I wasn't allowed to say I was depressed growing up. Yeah, I mean, if you don't have any problems and even, even problems saying in the gym, getting tired, pushing yourself, cold plunge, whatever, you have zero problems, you're gonna, you're gonna figure out a way to create problems. You're gonna get bored. Surgeon, you'll find. And then you're gonna get anxiety. And I'll, even at my gym, I mean, I see it. The four and five year olds are scrolling TikTok. Four and five years old. My kid would never have that, fun at that age. Had that level of stimulation. And I, I get it with the parents because it's like, God, I wanna train. The kids just need to sit here for a second. But then those kids, four and five years old are getting that level of stimulation. It's a recipe for fucking anxiety and depression as you get older. It really fucking is, dude.
And, and, and like nothing is real online. So like imagine, bro, growing up with like the insecurities that a human being grows up with, but then looking online to seeing all of like, oh. look at this is how she's beautiful. Look how he's killing it. Like before it was like you would look in the classroom out of 27 kids and judge yourself to 27 kids. Yep. Now it's 27 million kids. You're just like, tru, tru, tru. but like you, you, here's the thing, dude, like I grew up and my parents came from a country that they, they had literally had to, to survive, they had to leave it. Mm -hmm. Coming here, they had that dog mentality, like, yo, I'm in the mud, and now they're at a higher level in life. Mm -hmm. But they worked for it, bro. They didn't sit around being like, oh, I don't know how to speak English, or oh, I don't know how to like get a job. My dad had to raise his fucking parents in a new country. Think about that shit. Think about that shit. You have to come to a new country, go to school at night while your parents are going to bed because during the daytime, you have to work two jobs because your parents are too old to work. So he's taking, he never sat around me. My dad, he, he's like 50 something years old. We went to those, you know, those tree adventures thing where you're, mm -hmm. you're yeah. climbing and you're like chained up. Yep. And I looked and go, my dad's going to look at this shit and he's going to be like, no fucking chance. He looked at it, bro. And he was blowing past it. And he went to a place where he literally physically couldn't do it anymore. And I was like, fuck, bro. I forgot what the mentality was of like, you literally have to go until you physically cannot. Yeah. And that doesn't exist anymore. Uh, my dad put me in, that's why I love jujitsu and I always come here. Mm -hmm. I, I was in martial arts my whole life growing up and uh, it's a humbling thing and I'm gonna put my kids in it. You know why? Because there's always gonna be an opponent in front of you, like, I'm sorry, an opponent in front of you that either you're gonna beat up or he's gonna beat you up. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, if you could walk away from it learning, mm -hmm. then that's the whole matter of the fact. Mm -hmm. You're trying to train. I know it sounds stupid, but I used to watch Dragon Ball Z and watching Goku like just go up against a, a, a villain with a smile on his face with his whole like, you're either going to beat me up or I'm going to beat you up, but I'm going to learn something from this. Like I took that shit into my life because I go into situations be like, worst thing that could happen, it's a no. But that no, I could go to bed being like, yo, I tried my best. Like think about me not coming to LA and meeting Logan or doing Impulsive or doing all that stuff all because I was scared of the no. You're going to get the no. Might as well at least fucking try for the no. Yeah. People don't want to move. They're like literally terrified. But also weird because I like to reflect on what's going on in the room. And if you notice, bro, if you really take the time, no one gives a fuck. And I say this to people all the time. No one gives a fuck about you. Yep. They give a fuck about you in the moment that you guys are chatting. But sometimes they're not even even in the moment because they're so nervous on what they're going to say to you. They're not even listening to you. They're thinking about what they're going to say. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, what are we jumping around these fucking hoops for? Yep. People that don't give a fuck, bro. They yeah. don't care. They give, a, they give a fuck for a split second and then they're back onto their insecurities for a split second. But I, I want to switch directions a little bit. Because you you are a Christian, right? Yeah, a Christian. So what what if you were raised from a kid as a Muslim mm. studying the Quran? Would mm. you be a Muslim studying the Quran today? You think? No, and I'll tell you why. I was born in a Catholic home, mm -hmm. and so the church uh, that raised me, I have different views. Uh, I I don't. And mind you, I'm not saying theirs are right and mine are wrong, or mine's right and they're wrong. No, yeah. nothing like that. I, I fell in love with Christ as an individual, and then I realized that there's a dom denomination of Christianity, and that's solely just just your life around Christ and how he was our savior. Mm -hmm. Not adding any traditions, or there was a lot of things that, that didn't really add up in the Bible. So when I read the Bible, I really did read it for me. I grew up in the house, but when I read it, it did have me to a point where I'm like, ah, what my mom and dad raised me out to be isn't exactly where I want fully. So I want to be just right here. Not, by the way, not that that's wrong or right. Yeah. But yeah, I've read the Quran. I've read, uh, diff I've searched all types of religions. And believe it or not, it wasn't for me to get involved in them. It was for me to have just educated conversations with people that have. So like when I meet somebody who's read the Quran, instead of me being like, well, I don't know anything about yours and you don't know anything about mine. Yep. I love debating. I love, I yep. love having conversations. It's growth. Here's the thing, bro. Like I look at it like this. And every time I say this to somebody, when we're in a debate, so uh, say I do have a debate with somebody who's Muslim, right? I always go, you know, God's good. God's great. I really do believe that there's one God out there that is looking after us. So I always tell them, I go, if you believe your God exists, go home, pray that my eyes and ears open up to him. 
And if my God exists, I ask that he does the same. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, bro, I just want to serve my God. Yeah. So if my God isn't being served the correct way, I, I would I would be heartbroken. I would want to serve him the right way. Mm -hmm. So I always ask him to humble me and keep me at a level where I could see my God. Mm -hmm. And when I do read my Bible, bro, and I do go out into the world and I practice what he wants me to practice, I really do see my God in a lot of things. And yeah. I never, I, I, I talk about it because I'm passionate about it. Yeah. But like, I don't really, I'm not going up to people like, yo, dog, you better believe in my God. Yeah. Because I think like, regardless, even if I took my Bible and I thumped it at you, mm. I think it takes that time and place in your life for you to be like, you know what? I'm ready to hear about something. And it doesn't even have to do with God. It could be mm. about whatever your heart is opening up to. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's more interesting talking to you because a lot of religions, they're, they do not want to study, study another religion. They don't want their faith to wander to another religion. And a lot of religions will, will talk to you about, hey, don't. Don't let those other demons into your mind. Don't let that other, other stuff get in the way of your truth. I was raised until I was about 13, 14, a Jehovah's Witness, mm. like heavy Jehovah's Witness. My mom and sister still are. So I was always curious. I'm like, I, I always was like, man, I, I'm a good person, I think, because I was raised in religion. But then, then I started figuring out, I don't think I'm a good person because I was raised in religion. I think I'm a good person because I'm a good person. Yeah, absolutely. Started studying different religions and different books and how many different translations there are and looking into different things. And it's always, I mean, it's fascinating to me. It, it really is. Yeah, I I truly come after it as like, can I sit comfortably? Fuck yeah. Thank you. Uh, I, I look at it as like this, bro. Like I look at my life and I see that there's absolutely no way that this was me. And that's my version of it. That, so like, that's what? For, that is just, it's absolutely me. Uh -huh. Like I'll look at verticals where I'm like, there's no shot that this is me. Mm -hmm. um, and I could get into like uh, some points or, or past experiences where it could really open up that side of why I look at Jesus the way I do. But I do it because I'm just grateful, bro. Like that's really it is. I, I look at it and I'm like, yo, this this God that I, I serve is doing so much in my life. I want to see what is it that he wanted me to know. And so I got into it that way. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people get into it when they're at their low. A lot of people get into it when their family tells them to get into it. But Or if they're fearful of hell. Yeah, that's a big thing, bro. And I, I tell people like, I mean, listen, fear is a good thing. Fear is a good thing if it's used the right way, mm -hmm. right? Like, I'm not going to go and play in traffic because I'm scared of like getting hit by a car. I'm not going to fuck around with heavy drugs because I know it could lead me into a bad thing. I'm not going to go have unprotected sex because I'm scared of getting a girl pregnant. The fear is good because that keeps you away from danger. Mm -hmm. But if you're using it for love, that's not the best way to do it. If you're scared, you're not going to find a better girl, so you stick with the girl that you're with. You're, you're scared you're not going to get your job, so you're sticking to the shit that you're in. That's bad. So you have to really kind of like balance out your life. I, My sole reason why I follow God is because this is my concept of God, right? God, if there's a God, by the way, we'll just do a hypothetical. Mm -hmm. If a God exists, and I read in the Bible, he created the whole universe with a breath, why would he ever need anything from me? That was my first foremost thought. Why would he need me to worship him? Why would he need me to get on my knees and be like, oh God, you're so great and so mighty. And then I realized while reading the Bible, bro, that's not what the Bible is about. It has nothing to do with you sitting down worshiping him. Mm -hmm. It's literally, I always joke around saying the Bible is basic instructions before leaving earth. It's just here to help you out while you're here. So when I took what the Bible is coordinating me to do to this earth, and I, and I actually follow it, I realized that my life was substantially better, physically, mentally, spiritually. I was like, oh crap, this is amazing. So somebody asked me, they go, what happens if you die and there is no God? Then I would say, damn, I'm gonna add that to the list of how lucky I am that I fell into Christianity because while I was on earth, mm -hmm. it helped me out sub significantly. And do you think you can find some of those lessons and life paths through things like different philosophies, different, different books, not the Bible? Yeah, I think you could always find happiness. So like I, I always tell people, listen, if, you, if you're like, yo, I'm really depressed, I, I give them God because God is always the source for my happiness. Um, there is different um, theologies. There's different... Um, things that don't even have to do with religion that could r raise you up. Like Tony Robbins, I think that, that guy could get you out of bed and get you going. Oh, fuck like yeah. th there's a lot of things that could get you going. I I stay with my God because 
I believe what he gives me is wisdom. Mm -hmm. So he holds wisdom in his hand. So when I sit there and he's blessing me with opportunity or people or wisdom, to me, it's like, why would I not want to stay with my father in heaven? He's given me more than I could even dream of. And on top of that, kept me at peace. I know a lot of people that are in the position that I am financially or um, publicly that don't know how to handle it. That's corrupted them. That's taken them off the path. So yeah. that's why I always say hypothetically, my God doesn't exist. But even my made up God serves me more than a uh, no God. You get what I'm yeah. saying? Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. So like, it, 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 Which, the, who, it's the it's for me. It's math. If this if I if I punch in the numbers, it always adds up to be better with God involved in it. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, because uh, uh fuck, I lost my point here. Yeah, it's always interesting to talk about it. But one thing annoys me too, those people that will they'll just say, "Yeah, I'm Christian. I'm this. I this. Yeah, but I still fuck chicks without being married." I still do this. No, but I'm Christian. I am Christian. It's like, dude. Well, no, no, no. You could be Christian and make mistakes. But you know you're going to make a mistake tomorrow. And, and I'm looking to make that mistake. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're looking to make that yeah, mistake. Yeah, I'm, I'm swiping on Tinder looking for some strange puss. I know I'm not going to marry her. I want to fuck her. Yeah. But I'm Christian. Uh, he'll, 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 he'll forgive me for that. It's like. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, if, if, you're, if you're going in that way of motion, then yeah. Because a lot of people ask me, they go, yo, why do you have sex with your girlfriend and you're not married? That's a tough one. So uh, I don't really open up because it's such a bigger topic, but I'll open this part of my life because it's a little vulnerable, right? Yeah. So uh, before I met Belle, I realized that I was fucking around too much, bro. Like I was fucking around. But remember, I came from schools where they didn't like me. Girls wouldn't even entertain the thought of being with me. Uh, and then if I did get a beautiful ass girl, it was because I was really funny and charming. But then it got to a point where I'm like, I have money in somewhat of a... a, a name somewhat yeah. of a name so it, it became it became a way easier so i was having a lot of fun dabbling and um dating uh, uh going out with girls all the time and it somebody asked me to go hey when are you going to settle down and i said when god gives me the right girl and he goes that doesn't make sense and i go what do you mean i go i'm gonna fuck around right now and when god gives me the right girl then i'm gonna settle down and he goes well if you believe in a god why would you believe he would give you something great when you're doing bad? Like, why would he give you a good girl when you're treating all these other girls like shit? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, hmm, never thought about it that way. Mm -hmm. And so it was lack of wisdom. So I go, okay, fair enough. So I, I went celibate. I literally went celibate for like months. Were you jaying it to porn? Uh, at the time, yeah, but like, still, it was like one notch down. So mm -hmm. I was like, oh, now I have to watch. And I could have sex. So I was like, yeah, it was still like a struggle. But yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I was, I was still jerking off. And uh, I was sitting there watching porn, and then finally, I found a girl. And I'm like, oh, cool, I'm just gonna be with this one girl and see where it goes. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, instead of having sex with multiple women, I'm gonna try to focus it on one girl that I try to build a relationship with. Uh, and then while I was dating her, I met the love of my life, and I'm like, whoa. So it kind of did work out in a really perfect way. Then I'm with her and now I'm, I'm just with her. I'm not fooling around with anybody else or cheating or being a scumbag. But then people are like, but you're not married. And then I go, yes, I know that. But when I get married, I'm very old school, bro. I'm not going to get a divorce. Like I'm going to make sure I'll give it my absolute all because I'm not promising just to her that I'm going to be a good husband, a good father, yeah. but I'm promising God. So I, if I, my mind is like, if I'm going to sin, I'd rather sin having sex with my girlfriend now than get married because I, I feel like it's wrong, but I've already had sex. So I already made that sin. I'd rather not break God's promise getting into marriage right now while she's still young. She grows up, doesn't want to be married, breaks up. So it's like, yeah. there's a lot of thoughts in my head because I'm trying to make the best decision, but I'm always going to fail. I think you could be a Christian and fail a million times a day. Mm -hmm. I think being a Christian is a, a true Christian, bro. It's minding your business when it comes to sin. Like if you're doing something, I'm not going to go into your face and be like, yo, bro, God's going to be really upset with you. I look at what I have in front of me and my plate and I have so much crap I have to fix. I have to stop swearing. I have to eat better. I have to work out. I have to genuinely be a better person to people. Mm -hmm. There's so many things that I have to do. I'm not looking around trying to judge everybody else on what they got going on. So if you are a Christian and you are sinning and you are, you know, even though you're like, oh, who forgive me? To me, that's just a weak mindset as a Christian. And I, as unfortunately, in circumstances, do have a weak mind. So I think God judges the heart. 
So when he sees a circumstance, he's going to see your place. Like if a man steals, right, for greed is versus a man who steals for bread because his wife is hungry. Yeah. It's a different vertical. Yeah, that's what that's what I tell my mom. Because in the uh, Jehovah's Witness organization, they have 144,000 that are already chosen to go to hell, heaven and help God. And then after there's going to come judgment day, and then people are going to go to paradise on earth. Paradise where nothing wrong happens you're just living glory and the other people are just going to die so there's no hell but i told my mom i'm like mom if god if god's as smart as he is and he looks at my life and he looks at i i treat my body healthy i eat healthy i try to read i i'm i'm giving away all my knowledge to help better all the people around me i truly truly believe i'm a good person i'm doing a lot of good things mm. and judgment day comes and god looks at me he said you weren't going to the meetings you weren't spreading the word you weren't doing this and he kills me because that then i want to die <laughs> uh yeah i guess it's it, it's it's a point of view so i'll explain my point of view my point of view is this god created this earth he created us and the biggest blessing he gave us and somewhat of a curse is free will you could do however or whatever you want to do now, heaven isn't like, yo, it's this party. It's a, heaven's this house. So he gives that an invitation to everybody. Like right now, we're having a conversation. So this somewhat is an invitation for you to get to know him more. Mm -hmm. And he says, guys, when you're done here, if you want to join me in my home, you're more than welcome. Any race, religion, any anybody who accepts that I am God, come to my home and I'll the door's open. You knock, I'll, I'll open it for you. But... If you don't care to get to know him, right? And you don't want to know him or do anything. If you would go next door to somebody's house and knock on the door and be like, what's up, dude? Come on, let me come in. They're going to be like, yo, I don't know you. Mm -hmm. Why would I let you into my home? Mm -hmm. You don't know anything about me. Why would you even want to be at my home? So when people see this thing where it's like a fire burning place and then there's party, I see it as in like, yo, bro, there's an invitation. Did you want to get to know me or not? But he knows you, right? Yes. So he knows you and you come knock and say, hey take a peek at my life real quick and he sees it and sees the good things you did and yeah. the good person you were maybe yeah up to him so when people are like this is going to go to heaven or that's going to go to heaven that contradicts the bible because jesus quotes no one but the father will know right yeah so for, i have this debate with other people that are in different religions Listen, if a seven-year-old muslim right doesn't believe in jesus that i do right it's a hypothetical for christian's point of view mm -hmm. uh and he dies at the age of seven and he didn't get to grow up to really experience things i don't think my god's gonna be slamming the door on a six-year-old yeah. seven-year-old bro in the bible it says that you don't know love the way that god knows love so like you we're, like you love jujitsu you love your girlfriend you mm -hmm. love like you, you the things that you love right yeah now times that by a thousand that's how god loves you so we can't i can't sit here and try to paint you how god sees you because i can't even possibly imagine it yeah but i do know that he's given you what you need to have a relationship with him if you choose to have a relationship mm -hmm. with him that's up to you no one could push you to it yeah um but i do know that he would want a relationship with you and i've had these conversations with so many people uh and i've luckily been able to baptize a few friends not me personally baptizing mm -hmm. but like get them to baptism and get them to know jesus and it, it isn't like a there it is god uh i'm the man take, now. take me to, yeah. to heaven now because even in the bible it says that uh priests people that cast out demons good people they won't go to heaven because you don't know what's in their heart they yeah. might be only doing it to get to heaven or like to to scam people or do it we don't know right yeah. so i can't sit, tell you who's going to go to heaven who's not going to go to heaven mm. that is only up to the father but i can tell you through my experiences and through friends and family that i have turn them to Jesus and in in times of need of like struggling financially or or physically mentally all these verticals have always been solved bro and that's why my faith has always gotten so strong mm -hmm. and that's why I could be on a platform and risk it all bro because like you don't think that people have told me like pull me aside and be like hey man like you got to chill out on this Jesus yeah, talk yeah, of course. like there's so it's too much like how are you gonna be an entertainer and bro and once you go out and say oh i love jesus you know what that does put a target on you because everybody's oh, like you yeah. motherfucker you do this <laughs> you do that you do that yeah. and it's the most terrifying thing bro to think that just speaking about a god that i love could get rid of all the things that i have but it's worth it yeah because when i see 
somebody come up to me and they're like, yo, I was dealing with this, but you made me open up the Bible and now this is my circumstance. Mm -hmm. That to me, bro, you could take everything away from me. Yeah. But that you can't take away from me. That well, that love that I see in their eyes is just, it's unreplaceable. Yeah. And you're one of the ones I feel is pretty genuine about it because a lot of people, influencers, you're traveling all the time. I mean, we could, you could fuck chicks. You could fuck chicks whenever you want. But you're one of the genuine ones that would be like, no, I'm just going to not put myself in that situation. I'm just yeah. going to stay away from it. And that's a, I mean, that's a skill in itself, dude. A it, big one. It, it's all perspective, dude. Like, yeah. it, it's re like I, I, before I used to look at it like, oh, I don't want to sin. But now I look at it like when, because me and my girlfriend are best friends. So I tell her everything. So mm -hmm. there was there was a situation where these girls were being really inappropriate with me at a, in my hotel room. And it got to the point where you I want go. Want to suck your wiener? Bro, like we'll, we're pulling my fucking pants off while they were throwing. And you I'm like. Saw your big bush? Yeah, but big, huge. Middle Eastern <laughs> bush too. To here. From here to here. <laughs> it connected actually. Yeah. And uh, no, I, I told him, I was like, yo, you, you guys got to go. And that's why I got him an Uber and they left. And called my girl. You, like, were you battling the demons in your head? Like, oh, oh of course. Like, bro, I, told my girl, I, called, I told my girl, I was like, yo, bro, this girl is beautiful. This, this is that. Monogamy is always going to be a hard thing. I told her, I was like, listen, I didn't become gay when I dated you. I'm not going to look at these beautiful girls and be like, nah, I don't want it. Yeah. Like, it, these girls are still going to be, she's right there. She can probably hear me. Mm -hmm. Like, they're still going to be beautiful girls. But I, when I look at it now, I go, bro, my girlfriend is such a beautiful girl inside and out mm -hmm. the way she loves me the way she takes care of me mentally and physically spiritually like i will never ever ever find anything greater than this in my mind in my heart so when i look at it now i go wow god has blessed me with a woman that i know all of my friends consistently tell me bro you're so lucky to be with this girl so what kind of disrespect would i be giving god and this woman and this woman's mother that raised her if mm -hmm. i went out it was cheating on her or, or abusing her or like doing anything. So I look at it from that perspective. That was a gift. Yeah. That woman to me was a gift. If you gave me a gift, bro, I wouldn't disrespect you by taking another gift or, or destroying the gift you gave me. Mm -hmm. You gave me this gift, so I'm going to honor it. And sometimes, dude, honoring a gift is hard, but it builds discipline. Yeah. It builds a lot of discipline. And if you could get past it, because here's what I, because listen, there's a lot of people that I even love and look up to that would tell me this. They'll go, dude. Fuck around now, and when you're married, be be an honorable guy. Yeah. And and to me, I was like, that got me so aggravated because I was like, bro, like you can't just be a piece of shit for a day and then just call it. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm done being a piece of shit. Yeah. Like, bro, it's either like you're an honest human being or you're not. Mm -hmm. So I took a step forward, bro, and I was like, you know, not only am I not gonna fuck around, but I quit porn. I was like, I'm not watching porn. I'm not even gonna lay my eyes on a different woman. So do you and that eight? helped us out sexually. So once you get to three years with any relationship, you kind of get to like, oh, well, fuck. Like, but do you cut porn or jerking off? Dude, you'll be horny 24 seven. And like, damn. So do you do you have some good things in your spank bank memory or you guys, you're just, you just try to block Sadly, that I out? I do just cause I've, I've, <laughs> had, uh, I've had a history, but. Yeah. Uh, uh, and do you ever resort back to those memories? Nah, because it's empty, bro. Like even my friends that are very successful now that are dating um, uh, porn stars or they're dating uh, these models, it's so empty. And it's so cra it's a perspective. The grass is always greener, but when you're grateful and humble, you could see where the grass is actually green. You mm -hmm. just take the time to actually do your homework on it. When you're single, you're lonely. When you're in a relationship, you're horny. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. But then when I was single, I was at peace. I wanted to not fuck around and then i found a girl then when i'm in a relationship i'm at peace because i see what the type of quality she is you go out with these hood rat girls or club girls or even sophisticated girls but they come with baggage or stuff like that and they're dating you for a reason yeah you're the, inf you're the influencer or the clout chasers is there's bad. so many so many avenues but again those girls aren't bad i always tell guys like yo step up Step up. You, women didn't fail, bro. Men failed. Men failed the women. Mm -hmm. There's no more opening up the door, taking a girl out. Now it's splitting the bill 50-50. Like, these feminine women, feminists um, want equal rights, which is totally fine. But, like, don't stop being a gentleman because of it. If you're going to honor your girl and make her a partner, don't disrespect her by taking the qualities. Like, I like to spoil my girl. Open the door. Make sure she's beautiful. Brush her hair. Massage her. Like, take her out. Like, yeah. bro, like, this is my woman. This is my rib. This is my backbone. And the way I see these men treat their partner, like, that teaches me a lot. You're going to treat the woman you share this home with, this bed with, this family with, your bloodline. That's how you're treating this woman? What the fuck are you going to do to me, bro? Yeah.
Who, what are you going to do to me? Yeah, for real. You know what I mean? 100%. So, like, I, I could tell by the way a man treats another human being or his partner. It's just, I don't know, man. It's so funny because I get into these realms where me and you will just be talking and I'll just see life for what it is. And I feel like I sometimes when I'm blabbing, I, I make it seem like um, I know it all. But I don't know it all. In fact, I am so beyond not knowing anything. But a dumb man doesn't need to re- uh, make the mistakes he's already made mm -hmm. i learn from my mistakes and i also learn from other people's mistakes so i'm not going to slow down my path we have one life bro and the way these people are living their life in in the industry or out here in the real world i go bro you guys are doing it wrong and i'm not saying that like i know what i'm doing but like bro like why would you waste your one life moping around feeding yourself this anxiety depression fucking shit so if you even if you are depressed bro you're depressed i mean well god forbid if it's not a mental illness right mm -hmm. if it's a mental illness i don't i can't i can't talk about that you gotta go to have a, it. you gotta go to a mind mechanic exactly but i'm talking about and there's a lot of people that just feed that bullshit into them yep. i believe you are what you speak out to be you woke up every day you're like i'm gonna be a badass fucking fighter i'm gonna train the world's greatest and you fucking did it if I woke up every single day and be like, I'm a piece of shit and I don't feel good. Listen to the way people talk, bro. Like if you see depressed people, watch how they're always, oh, today was tough. It's really hot. It's yep. this. They're just complaining. Go look at the positive people. Wow, it's a sunny day. I might get a tan. Might go to the pool. Might do this. You are what you speak, bro. Yeah. You know, so speak good things. And for us, it's easy. I mean, it's a little bit easier to say because, well, I had two parents who loved me and provided. Mm -hmm. You had two parents who loved me and provided. So your, your wiring was... Your wiring's different than someone who was abused or who, someone who just, your wiring's different. 100%. But I think you can change it. 100% you can. Bro, all the greatest people that I've, I look up to did not have the childhood that I have. In fact, I would actually think that people that have a harder life have a better mindset. I think people that have parents that overlove them and overtake care of them kind of grow up to be a piece of shit because they're like living in this fantasy bubble world. But the people that had to really raise themselves, like my girlfriend had a, a, a pretty, like our childhood, very different, uh -huh. very different. And you could tell by the way we experience things. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can see it in her eyes. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be tough too having a kid because it's like, even with Sugar's kid or some of my friend's kids, it's like they're giving them everything. They have all these nice things. They have this, they're going to, they're going to grow up with this peachy life. But mm -hmm. it's like, we didn't grow up with that peachy life and we ended up good. Yeah. So it's like, ugh. so I, I actually, and dude, I have a theory for this. I don't think, I think we're all kings and queens, right? You could have your own land, your own property, your own queen. You get your own business, your own finances. I think you could be a rich good king with a good son it's all about how you discipline him for example when my parents came here they didn't have two pennies to rub together bro two pennies then my dad worked his ass off my mother worked her ass off and now they're millionaires but i didn't grow up being like yo dad i want this like that microphone that microphone right there was recorded uh thriller michael jackson's billy jean all, all of that thriller all of that m microphone right i know that because i went to school for it but i also know it because when i wanted it my father looked at me and goes show me how much you want it he goes what do you want it for i go well i think that i could make music out of it he goes then write me a song and so i had to write him a song performing in front of him and if he didn't like it he'd be like i don't like it go back perform another one i'll perform another one to the point where he heard one which believe it or not was feel so alive when i was 14 when i got my first microphone i go dad i think i wrote the song called feel so alive the reason why it's 80s because he liked to go to the disco that's why it was an 80s vibe so i go you know what? i'm gonna make you an eight i go fucking tell me what kind of song you like he goes give me an 80s beat and it's like all right so i made come on baby come on baby why don't you work it out uh -huh. and uh, he goes all right and we want we woke up went to guitar center got me a microphone got me the preamp and my dad looked at me he goes just because we you could have this doesn't mean you deserve it he goes when you show me you deserve it then i'll give it to you so like yeah my dad had money but he didn't just give it to me he made me work for it and i think what happens that disconnect like sean o'malley is going to have a, a beautiful life god willing right he, yep. he's going to grow same with you you guys are going to have the coffee shop you're going to have the businesses it's going to go up and i and i pray that god blesses your guys's family with fortune that you guys can't even think of doing with 
But I also pray that you guys have wisdom to know how to raise your family with it. Because, yeah. bro, you could. Your son could be eight times richer than you are, and I guarantee you he'd be even more wise than you because he has now more experience. Yeah. He could travel the world. He could learn a different language. So don't, don't look at it and be like, fuck, I hope if we have money that these kids are going to grow up to be pieces yeah. of shit. That's all based on how you raise your child. It's all on you, bro. This cup is an empty cup how it comes into this world. Yeah. What you fill into it is your responsibility. This whole bullshit of like leave my kids at school or with a nanny or all that shit. That's why our school system's fucked up. You yeah. just drop your kids at school and you want them to deal with it. It's not yeah. the teacher's job. Yeah, and I think the martial arts at that at that young age and them li living at the martial arts academy, it's going to be easier to kind of discipline them, teach them hard work, and teach them just good values and stuff. Oh yeah, bro, but then getting I, your ass kicked will fucking humble the shit yeah. out of you. It, but then I have these, I have my poodle dogs. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to train these dogs to be good, and I just give them whatever they want. They're just, they're just terrible. They listen terribly, but it's going to be interesting. When are you looking to have kids, dude? I, I, I I've been praying that God kind of like shows me which direction to go. Um, Recently, I've been kind of realizing that I do, I think it's time for me to step up and be a man and handle things. You wear rubbers? No. So you're running the risk every time? No, no, she's, she's, she oh, has okay. birth control. Mm -hmm. Um, no, so I, 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 I mean, also, bro, like, Belle's the, Belle's the first girl that is like, if God forbid she ever got like pregnant right now, like, it, it's not a scary thing to me. It's not like, whoa, what the fuck about like with all the other women I've ever been with? I was like, please, God. Yeah. No. Like, yeah, no, right. dude, I'm not even gonna lie to you. Like I, when I was in my shit stage, like when condom would break on like one night stands, I would call my mom crying and I'd be like, yo mom, like I'm a dad. I like, I, I think I'm gonna be a dad. This girl's a whore, bro. Like I'm not trying to like, my mom would just fucking cry. Why would you do this? Why would you even tell me this? I'm like, mom, cause I know God listens to your prayers. So like, could you please ask him to make sure <laughs> like, so like she would literally fast and she would call me. She's like, when are you gonna be done with this crap? But also, bro, like, are you, you're not single. You're in a relationship. Yeah, 12 years, almost 13 years. Bro, like, being, being like, uh, it's so funny, because I, I always tell this to people, because they're, my, my closest friends are like, yo, like, do you want to be single in this? But I found Belle, and then my Scott. Like, imagine, like, working your whole life, and then get to a place, and then all these girls are on you. It was just like, what the, what, now? That's kind of like, yeah. the timing is off, but I think the timing was perfect. I think I needed to find my queen at that time where the kingdom was starting to rise. Like mm -hmm. this is how my mindset was because all these other girls weren't in it. You know what I mean? Like this is this is the girl that God wanted to bless me with. So when I see this, I literally look at demons and I'm like, nah, dog, I'm yeah. not doing it. I'm not risking my life. I mean, dude, it is powerful having a smart, open-minded girl who's willing to learn with you, who's willing to grow with you, who's your partner, who's just there for you. Like, I'm so lucky to it's have It's a Mariah. blessing, bro. Like, so fucking lucky. Huge, huge. So how much, uh, what's your, uh, What's your routines for your vlogs and stuff? Do you have like a cr creativity or do you just kind of go with the flow and say, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna record. Do you have a set schedule on when you release? Dude, um, you know what's so funny? You, no one's ever asked me that on a podcast. So I really appreciate you asking me that. That's uh, like a, like the vlogs, I do love my vlogs. So for, for you to ask me that, I really appreciate it. Um, my vlogs right now, they used to be like really top notch. Like I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. We're gonna plan accordingly. Uh, but right now it's more of a lifestyle, just kind of my day to days, just because um, I'm going to be, uh, sorry, I heard us, a, a something stopped recording. Just wanted to let you know, I heard a- uh, One of the cameras- Okay, cool. Okay, yeah. Cool. Um, uh, I'm sorry, I lost my train. What was it? We were talking about vlogs and your routines. And oh, so yeah. Them. So my vlogs right now are very daily. So I just do what I'm doing daily because I can't go too crazy with the vlogs right now because I have so many things behind the scenes that I can't show. So I was like, all right, you know what? I'm just going to do a day to day vlog where it's just kind of like me, my friends, my family. Like what kind of stuff you can't show? So my stand up. Oh. So I can't show any of my, sorry, my tongue is all weird today. I can't show any of my stand-up right now because obviously I want my special and like I'm still working on it so it's not even good to show it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one of them. Uh, we're making a movie so I can't show the script or the people that I'm working on and it's very exciting stuff so I can't wait to show the world that. But yeah, all the cool things in my life I can't even show yet. So it's very like, here guys, watch this, be entertained in the meantime and then God willing when the time comes I show them this and they're like, whoa. Damn. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's pretty cool. So you have your vlogger with you every day? Every day. Every day is with yeah. you. Yeah, because we're docking the stuff 
that has to do with the movie and the stand up and then also the vlogs. Oh shit, that's gonna be yeah. awesome. Mm. Sweet. Yeah. So what's your routine for uh weed now? Dude, I don't know, man. I'm still trying to figure it out. It's yes, I have such an addictive personality. I have such an addictive personality. And Tim, bro, this is what weighs on me, bro, is because People judge every move I make because I am that social media guy that's waving the Christianity flag yep. in, in 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 like the more popular culture, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and it weighs on my heart because I'm trying to set a good example, but I also don't want to live for anybody else, right? I want God to judge me and have my own relationship with him and have my own battles. I realize I have a really, really bad addictive personality. Anything that I'm obsessed with or I love, I go full in on it. I'm never 99%. I'm always 100% in on everything that I'm doing. Uh, I never like drinking. Thank God that's knocked out Same. so many members of my family. Uh, uh, gambling, I don't touch. I don't promote. I don't do any of it. Mm -hmm. I, I'm so against it. I've had more. I, I had one brand deal offered to me that would have taken everything I've ever done in my life and just shit on it. And I was like, no, I'm not going to do it. Even Steak. my father was like, what are you doing? Take it. And I'm like, bro, like our family has lost family members over this. Like, I'm not gonna be the person that destroys a family because of my QR code that's gonna give you 10%. Go fuck, no way. Yeah. I would rather fucking die than to tear up a family and make money off of it. So I, I won't do that. Uh, and also, I can't do that. I can't gamble, bro. If I gamble, I'll lose all my money because I'm an addictive fucking animal. I have to go into it. So I know who I am, so I can't promote that. Um, but marijuana, to me, is like, I have my mixed emotions of it. I know it makes me a lazy fucking bitch and I eat like a motherfucker on it. Like I just eat terribly when I'm on it, but it's the only time that I could escape my overthinking thoughts. Mm -hmm. I overthink like a crazy human. I overanalyze everything. I review everything. And at night I want to shut down, right? So I smoke, but then when I smoke, I love it. And then yeah. I sit there in it. The next day I'm a little groggy. I smoke again to wake me up. Yeah. So it's like I'm caught in this really bad hamster wheel. Um, so overall, I think it's bad for me. I think I, I think it tears me up. I don't think it's bad for everybody. Just for me and my ability to not be able to control my moderation, I think it's bad. Um, I do find it better than drinking, though. I think when I'm drinking, I'm just... I think when, right when I drink or anybody drinks, they just become a heightened version of their worst self. I hate how those are compared. They're you really? Just, I hate how alcohol and marijuana is compared. It's uh, alcohol's terrible for you okay thank in you. every way okay thank you so that's what i'm saying alcohol to me is like i'd rather have my children smoke than drink because like alcohol is like bro like uh, if my son was out in the streets drunk on his own i would be fucking terrified if my yeah. son was out high out of his mind on his own i'd be like he's probably overthinking <laughs> he's a lot of shit yeah. and keeping to himself yeah. you know so that's my thing i, I want to smoke more bro uh and and figure out a good I think it's a tool. I think it, it, you could have a hammer and build a house with it, or you could take it and fucking murder yourself and just hit your head. Yeah. So it's, I, right now I'm hitting my head with it. I'm not building a home with it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, how do you how do you like monitor this? How do you not have brain fog? That's what I want to know. Yeah. Well, m marijuana. It's, it's similar to similar to what you said. I got all this shit going on, and I smoke it. It's it's a hack to meditation. If you you if you know how to actually meditate and you've been meditating for years and you know how to do it you can get to that same mental state that marijuana can put you in after one rip but i fucking love it too dude and i find myself i have like i have the volcano bag right now i'm kind of injured so i have a lot of kind of downtime so i've been smoking a lot and but i i still stay pretty uh, like working on my shit i don't just sit there and go Ugh. oh like, so you you smoke and then you work a lot of the times because so i have a I good do, i i made sure i'd never do that because again the addictive personality yeah. i know if i do that it'll be done i'll be high every day like every <laughs> yeah. day out of my mind yeah. and like in the audience will comment on it i thought you quit i thought you're a christian i thought you did this and so like just bottles like it hurts so bad because i'm not trying to fail them i'm not trying to like hey guys i'm gonna quit and then get back to it yeah. i'm not trying to disappoint anybody it's just life's hard bro like especially with what we got going on like dude yeah. you have a taste of the media life uh, and what it goes into and the production value it goes into. Uh, it, it, it Sometimes you need that, like, I just need to unwind, bro. Like, I need something to, like, get me off of it. And I've never dabbled in any other drugs at all. Mm -hmm. Oh, I mean, no, hold on. I've done mushrooms. Mm -hmm. And, again, this is going to sound really bad because I am a Christian. I don't, but I was I looking. I think mushrooms should be, like, used in a medical form. Because, like, I, my, I, I like to judge everything off of my point of view. I don't like, I don't, I don't like to hear something and be, like, running with it, Right. I had an issue in my brain that I couldn't solve. There was a situation that I just did not know how to solve it. 
My buddy goes, have you ever tried mushrooms? And I go, nah, dude, I don't like to fucking dabble with drugs. He goes, no, no, I'm not telling you to go and take a bunch of mushrooms and just go crazy. He goes, take a little bit, go somewhere by yourself where you're calm and just sit there and think about it. Literally like 15 minutes into it, all of the problems that I could not solve in my head were like I was solving them. And I thought it was like, oh, I'm just tripping out. So I started journaling my thoughts and like what I was doing. But I sobered up the next day, I read it and I was like, motherfucker. <laughs> I was like, these are all correct. Like I figured yeah. out how to solve the issues. So I called my mom, cause by the way, like it sounds stupid, but like my mom and dad, before I do anything, before I spend my money, before I smoked weed, before I did anything, I talked to them about it. I said, hey, here's the research. I'll send them the research. I go, doctors are actually now using this to help forms of blah, 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 this and that. I go, I wanna take this amount amount. This will help me. It's not gonna be a psychedelic at that point. It'll just be a, a, a very slow amount. And they were like, okay, try it once. And believe it or not, I tell people, like I've only done it once in my life because I only needed it once. But God forbid you're in a traumatic state and you really need help. I think this could be a better version than these pharmaceutical things that people are putting on you. Yeah, I mean, easily. But I was looking in the Bible. I was having this conversation with my mom and I was looking up different translations of what God says about the plants. And there's nowhere in there where he says, don't use the plants. Don't use. Um, no, I couldn't but, find it. So exactly. like, But that could get tricky. When you look for like what the don'ts are, it's kind of like, it, it's hard because he's not going to sit there and be like, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. But again, everything's with moderation, right? Yeah. So I believe we are, this, this is our domain. We could do whatever we please with it. But yeah. remember like, we could do a lot more with those plants than just smoke it. You know, I think that's the irony of it. Like we, we like, are like, well, it's ours. We could do it. But like, so is meth. And you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we're not going to do meth. It's common sense. But there's clear benefits. Exactly. Oh, that's clear, why I explained to my benefits. parents about it. I did my own research. I found that this is better. But again, if we're going to have like this debate, which I like to have honest debates, the marijuana we are smoking, it is not the marijuana our parents are smoking. Well, 100%. Like, this I is mean, like crack cocaine compared to what they were smoking. I mean, anymore at the dispensaries, they're just trying to get out pounds and pounds and pounds. And they don't give a fuck how. They'll, they'll spray it all with pesticides. They'll just put it under these these roofs and you're going to smoke shitty weed. So the, the importance of smoking a good quality organic weed is very fucking important. Mm -hmm. But yeah, talking to, talking to my mom about it, it's just like, okay, it says in the Bible, yeah, wine's okay. So people love to drink their wine and get buzzed up. It's okay to, if you vaporize a little bit of this beautiful herb and feel the awesome benefits and the love that comes from doing it. I, I, my mom used to always tell me this during times of like confusion when it comes to the gospel she would just be like god gave you a brain like just kind of use it you know what i mean like so if i'm doing it and i realize my business is going down i'm getting a little chubbier because i'm eating too much so like do you think god would be proud of you then probably not so you got to adjust i think everything is um is moderation yeah uh, that's 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 where I am with it right now. But I, I honestly, confidently, if a child is listening to me, if you're under the age of 22, 23, I wouldn't smoke. 100%. I would not smoke. And I, and, and I think it's because it changes who you are and how you see things. Yeah. I think men need to, and, and men and women, but I think they need to develop naturally. I think they really need to figure out who they are, try to take the world on for what it is, by themselves without leaning on something because I am at where I am right now. And when I use it, it drops my level of focus, my level mm -hmm. of workflow, my all that. So if you haven't earned it, I think of it as a celebration. Yep. If you haven't earned it yet, there's no reason. This confuses me, bro. When I see people coming to LA at the club, at the tables, trying to get girls, I go, bro, like you have no business being here. I have no business being here. I'm here because Logan Paul's here. Mm -hmm. Logan Paul earned it. I'm here with him celebrating whatever he got going on. I have no business celebrating like this. I need to get to work. I need to get focused. Yeah. I'm going to be here for 10, 20 minutes. And you could ask him, how long is George at the club? He'll be like 15 minutes and he's out. Mm -hmm. I'll go home. I'll read the Bible or get back to work. I'll get something going. But like all these people that are like living this lifestyle, like, yo, you got to live it to feel like it, bro. Like, no, Leonardo DiCaprio wasn't at the club first. He was killing box office movies and then became Leonardo DiCaprio where he's like, oh, I have all this endless money and all this shit. All right, I'll go to the club with all these women. That's his mindset. Like these yeah. people that are the greats, they weren't the greats celebrating first and then the greats. It's not how it works. Yeah. You have to work. Yeah. And I mean, it's science. Your brain's not done developing until you're 25 years old. And it's important. I mean, if you can look at something from the outside and say, hey, is this actually improving my life? Is it? 
is it look at it from the outside is this improving my life or is it making me oh fuck it's okay just chill out you live once just eat whatever the fuck you want is it or is it negatively affecting you being able to really look at it from another point of view is super important but we're getting at an hour here last thing anderson versus jake paul who you got <sighs> this one's a good one this one's this one's a this one's a good one because he he has hands. Anderson Silva has hands. Now he's known for his kicks. I don't know if a lot of people know that, but he's known for his kicks before he broke his like mm -hmm. ankle. Uh, he was actually my favorite UFC fighter, uh -huh. and I know that Jake and Logan were like they looked up to him. So just by the way, from Jake's perspective, imagine being from Ohio looking up to Anderson Silva. Oh, for and sure. And then now you're in a stadium fighting against him. Bro, when I look at what the Pauls do, I get goosebumps. And I'm like, dude, the fact that I get front row seats to watch these guys blossom into what they're doing is just. Oh, it's epic. Bro, it's a movie, dude. It's iconic. It's stuff. a movie. When I'm watching them do their thing, it's a movie, bro. <laughs> it's a movie. Uh, Anderson's 47. He's 40. He's an older dude. He, he so, a year ago, he beat. Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., who's 55 and three or something, or 53 and five as a professional boxer. Well, how old is he, though? How old is Julio uh, Jr.? In his I, 30s, yeah? I think so. I think 33? 33, 34. Dude, I mean, he is 36. So he's 35. 35 at that time. And, and he, he was kind of always known for not really training and kind of half-assing it. Who he, won that one? Anderson. Mm. I mean, if, if Jake. Who do you think? If I, if I had to guess right now, guess right now, I mean, it seems like Father Time hasn't caught Anderson yet. If I had to pick right now and put money on it, I would say Anderson by decision. But just that alone, if Jake even makes it to a decision, I mean, if he beats him, fuck. I mean, that that's crazy. I, if he beats him, the Mazdal fight's not going to happen. The Nate Diaz fight probably won't happen unless there's a ton of bread. Conor McGregor Wait, why fight would won't they, happen. Why happen. They'll be like, damn, he just beat this 6'3", fucking slick Anderson. I'm not going to be able to beat Jake, and I don't want to run the risk of getting oh, beat Oh, so you by think him. they're running? If they see him beat, beat up Anderson, they would say, yeah, fuck that. <sighs> Probably. People always ask me, like, oh, are these fights rigged? Are these, like, are this is <laughs> that? Bro, like, Jake and his bitch, like, Vine days. Like, yeah. Pussy looking, Jake, Disney, Jake. Jake will fucking throw hands on anyone uh -huh. at a moment's notice. Mm -hmm. And I've seen this with my eyes. He just has this dog mentality, bro. Yeah. Like, there's just something in his eyes, and it scares the shit out of me. Dude, okay. I grew up fighting. I would look in people's eyes and be like, oh, that's a real. I don't know if he, you know what I'm talking about. You would see it in some eyes, and you're like, oh, he's like, that guy's confident. Yeah. Uh, the first time I ever got knocked out was because I was too fucking stupid to look into people's eyes to see kind of like yeah. if this guy's real, knocked me out within like three seconds. So ever since then, I would look at people's eyes and be like, all right, this yeah. guy's a dog, this guy's not. And uh, just Jake is the only influencer fighter that I see that has that dog mentality. Yeah. That like will die in the ring. He'll die in the ring if he has to. And you really get to see the dog in someone after they get their asses whooped bad mm -hmm. and embarrassed and just like maybe knocked out, maybe just fucking whooped, whooped. Then after that, you get to really see what kind of dog someone is. So that'll be interesting because right now he's very confident and he should be. He's knocking out these guys. He has to be. You I'm, can't dude, go into that second guessing it. I mean, you KO people, you KO people like Tyrone Woodley and his confidence is at all time high. We'll see the dog if he loses, but like I said, but he, I, I want to see him keep bro. going. I want to see Jake keep going. I want. I think it's entertaining. Oh fuck yeah! He, it is. He, I, I have to say, I think boxing became boxing because of Jake. Dude. I think he brought it back. I think boxing was like a was like something that was kind of boring. Not that many people were like into it, especially because UFC, bro. UFC is like, bro, they're doing everything in there, like, every, and then it's real, bro. Like, I, I the, my level for respect went up for UFC after watching boxing training and like fighting, and then watching UFC and be like, whoa, these mm -hmm. guys are dodging everything that's coming at them, and they're like on the ground bleeding. Imagine when you get hit boxing, you go on the ground, and you're like, okay, we'll wait, ten, yeah, yeah. nah. And when they're on the ground, they're like. Kill him, Boom. kill him. Like, like that to me is crazy. Yeah, I believe Jake is going to win just because I just think it's his time, bro. I think yeah. it's like this is his moment in life. I think he's gonna keep pressing on. But damn, bro, even if he loses to Anderson Silva, what a fucking great way to go out. 
Dude, I don't think he's going to go out though. I think I, I I think if he loses Anderson, I don't think it really drops the stock at all. I think the I'm next, just saying his first loss is yeah. not bad. Not a bad loss. Yeah. Anderson Silva after doing all of this, it's yeah. not bad. But imagine if he does win, who do you think we would want to fight him next? Who would you think would put their whole career on the line? Because bro, he he's not just beating you. He's taking your career from you. 100%. He's saying, "Hey, Give me your legacy. <laughs> you know what? I could see it if he did beat him. I could still see Nate being like, fuck it. I'll do it. I'll fight anyone. I don't give a fuck for f whatever, how much he makes. Uh, Nate versus Jake after Jake beat, beats Anderson because this is Nate's last fight on his UFC contract this Saturday. Really? Against the motherfucker that no one wants to fight. Why does nobody want Kamzat, to fight him? He just smashes people. He's, oh, what's his name? Kamzat. He's fucking huge. He's 6'2". He, I mean, he, he cuts from at least 205. Nate is a huge underdog. In the UFC, it's his last fight on his card, so we'll see. Nate gets whooped by Kamzat. Jake beats Anderson. That fight could happen, and it'll be massive. I hope it happens. Bro, that would be crazy. Cause like when he first started chirping, I don't, I don't know if you guys remember this, but when he first started chirping at the Diaz and like all these other big fighters, mm -hmm. everybody's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it became like, well, like, you don't know. And then now it's like, bro, I hope that shit happens. <laughs> Not like you know what I mean? That's yeah. crazy, bro. You go to these fights, bro. Uh, I'll never forget when uh, you and O'Malley walked in. Um, and the love you guys get at the fights is incredible. Yeah, they love sugar. They love sugar. I mean, he pops out, and how can you not? I mean, you want to watch that motherfucker. He's fight. an entertainer. There's no one that skinny, that small, that's flatlining people. No. And now we got to fight the number one guy on planet Earth, Peter Yan. In we leave in four weeks to Abu Dhabi. It's a huge test. It could be a huge moment, but we're preparing, doing everything we have to do to be ready to kill him. I know this time is ticking, but I have to ask you one question. What did you guys feel like with your last fight? Was Did you guys feel robbed? A little bit. I mean, yeah, a little bit. Because you, you watch the fight back and there was a punch that got punched in the eye. And you've never seen Pedro really fight like that. He couldn't even get in range. He couldn't do anything. And I think he took the smart decision on saying, I'm done. Because Sh Sean was starting to fight his range. And I think two, three more minutes, he would have KO'd that guy. I feel like, yeah, he was like a, like a computer. He was learning all of his stuff, and then he was like going into it. And the eye thing, bro, that was bullshit. Like, he didn't hit his eye. Yeah, and it sucks because Pedro is the nicest fucking guy in the world. Oh, is he? And he's a vet. He's just a great dude, and uh, he's not the type to do that. Uh, so it's hard to just kind of bash him. But I'll do it. Fuck you, Pedro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's episode 55, everyone. If you want to support the pod, please subscribe. Um, we're coming up. Uh, it's growing, and I'm enjoying doing it. So thank you so much, George. You thank man. you for having me, man. Peace out, guys. Love you. Bye-bye.